This is the Z Code Editor. It's scratch written in Rust, it's incredibly fast, and it's all open source. Today I'm going to demonstrate the new agent panel, and I'm going to demonstrate it by having the agent panel modify the code for the agent panel itself. So here I've got the Z code base checked out, and I'm asking the agent, currently the pass interactions part of the agent panel, that is this part right here, always shows six entries. Please change it so this number is configurable in the user settings. Now I'm going to press enter. And what's happening here is that Zed is sending this prompt over to the large language model. In this particular case, the large language model is Claude 3.7 Sonnet. I'm using this through Zed Pro. But you can also bring your own API keys. We've got a whole bunch of different options here. And if you want, you can even use Olama to bring your own model. You can run your own model on your own hardware and use it completely free, no problem at all. Now, what's happening here is that we're not, as you can see, doing a chat back and forth. The prompt that I got sent is coming back with tool calls. So this is where Zed has provided the model with a variety of different tools it can use. These are basic editor functionality, such as searching files, reading files, and things like that. And at some point, it's going to finish reading through all these files and discovering what it needs to do. And here it's come up with a plan. Let's go ahead and just watch what it's doing when it starts making edits. So I'm going to hit follow agent, and now what's happening is that we can actually watch it start to do these edits in real time. It's going to hop through the code base and make all of these different changes to these different files based on all the context that it loaded up and figured out on its own. Ah, nice. See, notice that this edit seems to have introduced an error. Let's fix it. Now, one of the things that the model has access to is it has access to diagnostics based on the language server. So it received the information that that particular edit that it had made introduced an error, and it was able to go back and correct the error. Now this is going to take a good amount of time, so I'm just going to go ahead and let this cook. And while it's working, I'm going to switch to a different window and go do something else. So here I've opened a second Z window. The other window still got the agent running, so this is one of the nice productivity benefits of having the agent is that it's able to continue making progress on the task while I'm doing something else. This is a blog post that needs some alt text for its images. So one way I could do this is I could come in here and do an inline assist, like so. Very nice. But there are actually a couple of different places in this file that need alt text as well. So I'm just going to open the agent panel and say, add alt text to all the images. And this time I'm going to press this suggested context button so that it adds the context of the current file. That way I don't need to wait for it to go and discover files because I know exactly which file it wants to be working on. Once again, I'm going to follow this thing and just uh, see what edits it's making in real time. Very nice. Very nice. Now, of course, I'm going to want to review all this to make sure that it actually generated reasonable alt text. Ah, nice. We got a little notification telling us that our existing agent is done. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to there. It looks like it edited three files. So I can expand this and just see, okay, there were three different files edited. I can review all these files in one diff. So I open up this review panel. I can immediately hit reject all or keep all, but let me just go ahead and take a glance at what it actually did before I decide that. Now, sometimes models will do silly things like this. Like it just added a blank line here. No, thanks. I'll keep that as it was. This looks a lot more interesting. So now it's actually getting a global setting and using the past interactions count off of that. So I'm going to command click on this because this whole panel is completely editable. And now I've jumped to here where it actually implemented this thing. So it <laughs> decided that if the past interactions count is zero, then it sort of defaults to six. That doesn't seem to me like the right way to implement that default, but it's okay because this is just a completely regular buffer. So I can just delete that and now it's the way I want it. Okay, let me just jump down to the next change, the next change. Oh, nice. So this is a good example of where agents can be really helpful, especially in comparison to a more deterministic, but less powerful tool such as language server completions. What happened here is that the agent noticed that one of the things that you have to do when updating settings is that you need to provide an upgrade path for old settings to migrate to new settings whenever we introduce something new. And essentially that's what this merge call is doing. It noticed this sort of pattern that there's all these other calls to merge elsewhere in the file. And it said, you know what? We need to do the same thing for past interactions count. This is really nice because this is something that I could have very easily forgotten to do myself if I were working on this on my own. All right, let's keep going. Okay, adding the field. And we're back to the top. Great. So I'm happy with all this. I'm going to press keep all. Now we're on to the next file. Again, that looks good to me. Nothing else in this file. Just going to keep all. And I think we're all done. So now I can open up my git diff and just sort of see a comprehensive list of all of the changes that it made. Just scroll through all this. Oh, looks like I missed one extra comment that we definitely don't need. And the rest of this looks pretty good to me. Now, there are lots of different ways to get value out of the agent panel, but what I like about this example is that it demonstrates a really common way, which is just freeing me up to do something else in a different window while I'm waiting for the agent to write code, and as long as I'm doing a good job reviewing, I can still end up with a very high-quality outcome. Check out our website at z.dev to learn more.